Hi, I'm Amber, and welcome to the Lone Star Keto Podcast. And today we have a very special guest with us, Bronson Don. And he is a health and CrossFit coach, as well as a personal trainer. And he is the founder of the Apex System, which he will talk about later. Welcome, Bronson. Hey, thanks for having me. How are you doing? Absolutely. Doing good. Can't wait to hear your story. So Bronson, tell us first, before we get into, I have like this, you know, two pages worth of questions here, but uh, <laughs> oh, oh, scary, right? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. I got all day. No, oh, there you go. Okay. So I want to know your background. I want to know like what got you to this point in life? Why do you do what you do? Did you have health issues? Did you ever suffer from obesity and you were in the military? I want to know a little bit about that. So give us the whole background so we can kind of know where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, gosh, how far back? Let's see, 30 years ago. Uh, no. So I actually joined the army. Yeah, I actually joined the army out of high school. Um, and when I was, a lot of people, you say this, right? When you're a teen, you're growing up, you're active, you're doing things, weight, health, like you don't even think about that stuff. So I got out of basic training. I was 185 pounds. I was like 7% body fat. Um, and life was good, right? Um, come to 2009, I get out of the military. I was in for about 17 years. Um, I get out and at some point I realized, hey, wait a second, things aren't quite the same, right? <laughs> um, I was in my mid thirties, uh, you know, almost 40 and what really hit me was, and if you follow my Instagram at all, you've seen me post this picture of me sitting on a chair at the beach. And my daughter took the picture and somewhere along that day, the next day, she showed me the picture and I literally was like, there is no stinking way that is me. Like that, that cannot be me because I still have the picture. And this is a, something that I've run into a lot with a lot of people. You have a picture in your head of who you think you are based off of the past, mm -hmm. based off mm -hmm. whatever. Now, and that can be good. That can be bad, mm -hmm. right? Um, that can be something that brings you down or that's something, something that makes you go, hey, I think I'm fine when really I'm not. And that's where I was at. I felt like, because I still went to the gym. I didn't really work out. It was like social hour, hang out with the guys, lift some weights, look at the girls, that whole kind of thing, right? Um, and so I just had this picture, this a self image of a fit guy, active, whatever. Um, and I really wasn't right. I was 40 pounds overweight. I had, I, I, I describe it as, um, epic bowel issues, um, right. Urgent bowel syndrome, if that is isn't even an actual thing, but urgent bowels, um, and other things, um, was always tired and it was everything right. Diet exercise, all those types of things that we don't hear about. Um, but that picture was probably the pivotal, like smack in the face. You know, there's something about seeing yourself. Not only was I in public and completely oblivious to what I looked like, not that looks matter, but to me, seeing that was just like, that is not the picture that matched what I had in my head. <laughs> so seeing that picture and going, that's not this guy. I need to get back to what I think this guy should be. Um, and that's kind of what kicked it off. So I was almost 40 at that time. Um, I went on a cruise and met a guy who owned a CrossFit gym in Miami. And I met him, I say, I was doing my workout thing in the workout room on the cruise. And I saw him actually working out. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what is that guy doing? Because I want to do that. So I introduced myself to him and we started talking. He did, you know, he showed, walked me through a workout and I got off that cruise and I was like, I need to find a CrossFit gym. Like I need to go somewhere where I can learn how to do this stuff. Um, and I did that. So I, we, I found a gym, um, went there for a couple of years, moved to a, moved to a, a, a moved downtown Baltimore, found a gym, started coaching there. Um, and then in 2000, the end of 2014, I actually opened my own. So I opened a CrossFit gym ran that gym for about five years, sold it last September. And now I have moved everything to online and virtual. I mean, not everything. actually, I actually still do coach CrossFit classes locally and do personal training as well. But why did you close down your gym? It was a, a, a lot of different reasons, but I think the biggest reason was 
around around two ish, two and a half years into opening the gym is when I found carnivore. Um, and that opened up so many pathways in my brain about what health is and what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong and how all of this stuff is supposed to come together that my picture of what I wanted to do to help people get healthy changed. Right. So there is a fitness aspect. I was not anywhere near aware of how important the nutrition aspect was until I started doing carnivore until I had to relearn and rethink everything that I thought I knew. Right. Um, and then that opened up the pathway because now I'm in going in that direction of looking at more mindset and the value of coaching and you of having um, someone who's made those mistakes, right. Help you work through your things and figure out what works best for you because, and we'll probably talk about this. There are things that work better for individuals than one, you know, for one individual than another, but that, that is something that you have to have someone direct you. you. Your chances are of you finding that yourself are very slim, right? You, it really, really helps to have someone who can help you filter the noise and figure out what's actually working best for you once you've found a, a baseline and a foundation to work from, right? And that's where a lot of people get mixed up. They start trying to find these individual things when they haven't figured out the base first. So. That's yeah, it only took point. me 40 years, but you know, who's <laughs> counting, right, whatever. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, and I say it all the time. I talk to my clients and, and the members at my gym. It's like, you know, I, I'm 48. If I, I didn't find CrossFit until I was 40. If I had found it, if I had known about it when I was 25 or 20 or think, you know, God bless mm. the kids who are eight years old going to CrossFit class right now. I'm like, oh my gosh, you have no idea how well you are being set up for life. Like it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And I, you know, that's why I do what I do is, is the same kind of reason because it's like, it took me all those years because I kept doing the same thing, expecting a different result, duh, but that's what you're told. And so mm -hmm. I believed it and I kept thinking it was my fault. And, you know, so I, I, I want to be that person that kind of tries to help people understand that maybe what they're doing is not the best thing. Maybe exactly. they need to try something different, you yeah. know, just to see, you know, just try yeah, just try, just try. It. It's what you're already not happy. You're already uncomfortable. You're already sick. You're already in pain. You're already, uh, all of the negative is yes. already there. What is trying something different going to hurt? Exactly. But people are so resistant, aren't they? Right? Oh, 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 yeah. It blows my mind. Blows my mind. But you know, I did it. So <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I was, I don't know if I was resistant. I think it hit me because like I said, I've already figured out like, Hey, wait, I need to do something different for my fitness. And the, so the nutrition thing, I actually kind of air stepped, right? First I was married and I was married to a nutritionist. So by default, oh. Hey, guess what? Whole foods, we're going paleo. That's, that's, and she, cause that's where very much where she was at. So it was paleo. So that was my first introduction to, okay, I can't go eat at, you know, the Thai place and get a giant whatever pad Thai and spring rolls anymore. No more pizza, no more French fries, unlimited French fries at Red Robin. Um, you know, all those, all that stuff. I, lit, I seriously, to give you an idea of what I used to do, right, before I started making these changes, I would get up in the morning and my breakfast would be Dunkin' Donuts coffee with cream and sugar, okay? Um, at least one, at least one Boston cream donut and two or three of the mini egg and bacon wrap thingies, okay? That was lunch, or that was breakfast. Lunch was a either a bacon cheeseburger or a chili bacon cheeseburger um, at Red Robin with at least, because it's unlimited French fries, at least two baskets of fries, right? And then dinner was probably going to be pizza or pad thai or spaghetti or, I mean, that was every single day. Not to mention if I had any snacks throughout the day or whatever else, right? So just in my living situation changing and being with someone who was constantly saying, look, I'm going to prepare your food and this is what you're going to eat. That was my first exposure to, hey, wait a second, what you eat really makes a difference. Um, but it didn't really hit. It was like, okay, some things may have gotten better. Then she became a 21-day sugar detox coach, 
which I don't know if you know, Diane Sanfilippo, 21 Day Sugar Detox. It's a program. It's a coaching program. 21 days, no processed anything, no sugar, no alcohol, no nothing. Now, I had already kind of been no sugar, no processed anything, because that's kind of how she was anyways. The one thing that I cut out, and this is what really made me go, no alcohol for 21 days. Oh, okay. You're killing me. Right? You're like, <laughs> and that's what I thought. I'm like, ah, this will be no big deal, right? I didn't drink a lot. Maybe three or four nights a week, okay, I would have a glass of whiskey. I'm totally a bourbon guy. So all you bourbon people out there, you got my thumbs up. <laughs> um, but learn what it's doing, doing to you. Um, all I did was st- I didn't change my exercise. I didn't change my working. I didn't change anything. Just stopped drinking three to four glasses of bourbon a week. And I lost 10 pounds of pure fat. I didn't lose wow. muscle. I didn't lose. It was 100% fat. Um, and I was like, whoa, like there's no way. Right. And then it was shortly after that where she came home one day, it was shortly after the, the infamous, uh, Baker Rogan podcast. She's like, Hey, I just heard this thing. You should totally try this. Maybe it'll fix your stomach issues. Right. Because I, like I said, urgent bowels, I was the guy, I was the guy who, um, I would not go anywhere without some form of toilet paper with me because I never knew when or where I would be when I needed to do that. Wow. There was a roll in my toilet. There's a roll, a couple rolls in my trunk of my car. Whenever we went somewhere, I made sure that I had like some kind of tissue paper, paper towel, toilet paper, something stashed somewhere just in case I needed to go. Um, because I never knew. Like I, I have been on roads in Europe driving for work when I would travel for work and not know where I'm in another country and have to pull over on the side of the road and be like, I hope I can pull over here because I don't have a choice. Right. So that was the kind of thing. And it's stressful. Mm -hmm. It's really stressful. You can't, you can't really go anywhere. Every time you go on a trip, you got to try to go to the bathroom like two or three times before you get in the car, just in case, like you don't want to get on a train. You don't want to get a bus. You don't want to get an airplane. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it was so bad. Um, so she came home and she was like, Hey, why don't you try this diet and see, see what happens? So I was like, I listened to some of the podcast and I was like, there's no way. Like, are you kidding me? And then, it, then I was kind of like, but you know what? Honestly, I don't really like veggies. I don't, I won't eat. I don't, I only started eating veggies cause she made me eat veggies. <laughs> I never really liked eating veggies. So yeah, what the heck? Why not? I'll give it a shot. So I, from I, like literally that night I said, no more veggies. Right. I, I didn't even go shopping. It was like, whatever meat we have in the house, I'm going to eat that till we run out of it. And then I'll go to the store and get stuff. And that was May of 2018. Mm. And I have not gone back. Right. So it's been two plus years. Um, I am loving, absolutely loving it. Right. It is the best thing I've ever done for myself. That is so awesome. And see, I hear this daily because I do the success story podcast for Meet Our Ex. And mm-hmm. I hear people all the time who have the same um, kind of stories. And um, okay, let me ask you this one question before we move on, because I was about to just kind of go there. That but... was super long. So just <laughs> <laughs> I'll just stop. <laughs> okay, just real quick. Um, and, and this is because my son was in the military. Okay. And I, when I found out what he had to eat, and then the MREs yeah. and stuff, I was like, oh, good God. Yeah. So what do you think about that? I mean, that is pure crap. I understand y'all need the calories and, you know, all that kind of stuff to do what you do, especially mm-hmm. like some of the things that my son did. He needed the calories. I get it. But it's pure crap yeah. how they yeah. get those calories. It's, it's not the best. Um, and it's changing. I don't know if you've heard, but it is. No. Changing. Yeah. So we can talk about that. Um, and if I can remember, remind me later to send you the, there's only, there's some articles and some stuff about what's going on in the military. Awesome. Um, the, the philosophy based on government guidelines, what we, you know, what everything's been told, right. We're talking about mm-hmm. the government, right. It's purely fuel, right. There is no, there, there has not been in the military, any, any consideration for health of these soldiers, or health of the Marines, or health of the airmen, or health of the sailors, or what do they call the Coast, Coast Guardsmen? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I never thought about that before. Um, so it's always been about we need to give them the energy to do what they're doing. And that is all an MRE is. And 
Emory is essentially a fuel pack to keep to keep the the, the military engine running. Um, there is a shift in focus um, that is coming. It's being planned. It's being talked about. There are some things that have already started happening to a more holistic approach to managing that. Right. So they're looking at awesome. They're looking at nutrition plans. They're looking at how can we do this. Last year, a couple years ago, there was some information coming about how they were testing keto for soldiers um, yeah. and seeing how, you know, how does a soldier work in the field for a month or three months or two, you know, two weeks or whatever, live in the woods and they're just eating mostly, you know, meat and fat, um, things like that. So there it's happening. It will be a slow process. Um, it's coinciding with the fitness side because the fitness tests are changing right? The fitness tests are moving to functional fitness, right? It's not just sit-ups, pull-ups, and run anymore. It's deadlift and throw and um, shuttle runs and carrying things. And oh. it, I mean, it's getting to a whole, where the, the military is finally going, hey, wait a second, right? There's more to this than what we've been doing. Wow, um, that's awesome. So I think, I think it's, it's an awesome thing. It's a super awesome. Awesome, thing. awesome. So yeah, I agree with you, I, yes. I, I would just cringe and I'm like, Oh my God. And you know, that was even before I was, you know, highly into keto and stuff like that. And I'm like going, this is terrible. And yeah. then the ingredients and he actually brought me home one of the little oh, squeezed oh, cheese packages and I squeezed out the cheese and I'm like, what the hell is this? It's not cheese. It was the it's most not, disgusting thing I've, I've ever seen. I'll tell you what, after, a few weeks living in the woods or in the desert, that thing is those things, man. <laughs> I tell you what, give it to yeah. me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was so bad, so bad. Okay, all right, so now let's get into Okay, I saw Bronson in a video. I just happened to come across his video, and he impressed me so much, I was like, I have to have him on my show because he just really hit home with me and I just love what he said. So I want to kind of uh, go over and you know the video I'm talking about mm -hmm. and it's basically where you're talking about how um, we are actually biologically the same. We may have some differences as far as issues going on and et cetera, but we're biologically the same yeah. and how when you um, try any diet that cuts out some things that are not good, you're going to see an improvement, but that doesn't necessarily mean what you are eating is good. It's more about right. what you're not eating. So right. go for it. Go, go do, do what you do so in that video. I'll just so start awesome. with, yeah. I'll just start with what you said, because that's where the danger is. Right. And that's why I wanted, that's why I made the video at first. I have conversations with people almost daily who want to argue the fact that it's, uh, gosh, I'm getting all, okay. So to start, it started off with a conversation I had with somebody about calories in, calories out, right? There's, there's a small group of people that I know personally who consistently want to hammer me and they'll post things on their social media that talk about, it's all about calorie deficit, blah, 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 because they know I'm going to see it and I have to fight not to respond because I don't want to start anything and all this other kind of stuff. So that's where it started. Um, and it's, the, the, it's a trap, right? It's a trap. Um, because people see a change, their initial reaction is, oh, this is working for me. And, but then they never revisit it, right? Oh, this is working for me. Five years later, right? I'm having this problem. I'm having that problem. I'm having this problem. I, I gained the weight back. Now, not only I'm skinny, but now I'm skinny fat. I don't have any muscle. I got joint pain. I can't sleep. Whatever all the other issues are, right? And it's because what their initial goal probably was to lose weight, which is a great goal to start, but you have to evolve, right? There's more to health than mm -hmm. just your weight. It is an indicator, but there are so many more things that go into it. And people focus on the weight, which is another societal issue that I have, right? With just focusing on the weight because the weight doesn't mean squat, right? Mm -hmm. Technically, I'm obese, right? Te my BMI is 26, where? Okay. Right. Well, that's the thing, right? So I'm at under 10% body fat. I weigh 185 pounds. I'm six feet tall. Right. But because my weight, because of my muscle mass, it changes the weight ratio to oh, my weight. Right. 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 And it, okay. it makes my BMI go up. So right. technically I am overweight and that drives me crazy mm. when I talk to people. It's like, 
forget about the weight, forget about the scale. What's your body fat percentage? How much muscle do you have? How do you feel, right? Because you can technically get healthier and still be a little overweight, right? Because there are things that happen to your body along the way. It's a process, one thing here, one thing there. It, you, you know, you're not, it doesn't all change overnight. So, so the, the, the trap of seeing some progress and then thinking that this diet is for me, right? Oh, I went vegan and I lost 15 pounds and I feel great. I've got so much energy. That's fantastic. That's awesome. What's next? Right? What are you going to do to continue that? Because you're, you're probably not looking at the markers that matter. You're not looking at your body fat percentage to know that over time, your visceral fat is going to increase and your lean mass is going to decrease. Even though you don't look like you're getting fat, your amount of fat is going up right? You're not looking at your inflammation markers to know that you're probably gaining and getting more stress in your system. Your inflammation is going up, right? You're not looking at these things, but because initially you saw a result and that's what the video is for, right? Is, is we're all the same, right? If I eat too many carbs, I'm going to get more fat. If you eat too many carbs, you're going to get more fat, (laughs) right? You may get it into different places than I do, but it's going to, it's going to happen, right? If I eat more protein, my body is going to increase thermogenesis. I'm going to have more materials for my body to generate and recover and build lean mass. If you eat more protein, your body is going to increase thermogenesis and you're going to have more materials for your body to recover, regenerate and build lean mass. That's how our bodies work. There's, there, you're, not, you're not, anybody listening to this there are things that you cut out when you go vegan. And I think I said it in a video, the, it's something that we talk about when we look at studies, right? All these health studies, nutrition studies, that most studies don't include what we call the healthy user bias, right? And the healthy user bias is those things that affect a person's lifestyle because they're making healthy decisions, right? So if I'm saying I'm going to improve my health, and I'm going to go vegan, I'm going to go vegetarian, I'm going to go paleo, I'm going to go whole foods, I'm going to go keto, carnival, whatever it is, chances are you're looking at other things in your life and you're trying to improve those as well, right? So most people are not just going to change their nutrition. They're probably also going to start walking. They may join a gym. They may try to get more sleep. Any number of, a di- of different things that are going to help improve their health, Right? It's not, number one, it's not just what you're eating. That's a big part of it, but it's not just that. There's other factors. So, you know, like I said, I think evolving is the one piece that people are missing. And if, if you're open to, to that idea of evolving as you improve your health, right, and changing the protocols, and, and this is where the phrase finding what works for you drives me crazy because like Princess Bride, right? I do not think you, that word means what you think it means, right? Finding what works for you doesn't mean find something that works once and that's yours. Finding what works for you means find what works for you in this moment until it doesn't and you need something new to get you to continue towards your goals. There's an assumption that you're always trying to improve and get healthier and you're evaluating where you are and what you're doing to see if it's getting you where you want to go. And if it's not, you need to change what you're doing, right? It's cyclical, right? It goes in a circle, right? Yes, so, yes. <laughs> so that's, that's the piece I think that a lot of people miss. Yes, yes. Right? So, and, and that's my process, right? If you think about, like, I'll just use me as an example. I started out sad plus, sad on steroids, right? Then I went paleo, then I went keto, then I went carnivore, right? Even within those, right? Because you have to experiment with yourself. You have to find out what's working. I've tried OMAD. I've tried intermittent fasting, right? I've tried super high protein, super low fat. Right now I'm trying super high fat, moderate protein. It's crazy. Okay. Mm. So there's a lot of stuff that you have to play around with to find out what's working for you now. Exactly. That doesn't mean yes. that's going to work for you for the rest Tomorrow. of Tomorrow. <laughs> evaluating where you're at. Yes, 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 yes. And that is something that I'm having to learn, which I already knew that, but it's really hitting home because I'm hitting that pan menopause 
I've said that a million times in my videos, but it's true because <laughs> it's like this dumb thing. I hate it, but it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. And you know what I work for me is not really working for me right now. There's something yeah. not right. My hormones yeah. are wackadoodle. So I'm kind of having to experiment and try some different stuff, some, some supplements and some different stuff like yeah. that, and trying to, you know, that's where the, the, it just, it just, you said something, I don't know what it just clicked in my head, but there's been a few people, you see it in the vegan community whenever someone who's vegan says, hey, wait, this isn't working for me because I'm sick as crap and I need to start eating meat again. And they get destroyed in the oh, vegan yeah. community, right? Yes, they do. I am somewhat ashamed it was happened in our space, right? Because I've seen me there too. are some other people who yes. are saying, look, I've added, I've added in some carbs because I feel like it's what's working for me right now. Go for it. That's fantastic. Exactly. Right? There's no. Yes. Right? It's, this is another discussion, another, another thing where us as, as people who are putting it out there, who are putting ourselves out there, right? Trying to garner attention. We have to be somewhat um, on the over, the overdoing it side as far as look at me, look at me. Right? So our, <laughs> our headlines, our attention grabbers have to kind of be, you know, Hey, carbs are bad. They're going to kill you. Right. So then that kind of becomes a narrative, even though that's not technically what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So I think there, there's definitely some confusion in the message sometimes. Um, I know I get people that yell at me all the time, like, what are you saying? I can't eat carbs. I'm like, I'm not saying you can't eat carbs. I'm saying that they're probably not doing anything good for you. And you need to understand what they are doing when you eat them. And is it helping you reach your goal? Because that is always, always the ultimate question before you decide to do anything. I don't want anybody listening to this to ever ask again, can I have something? Do not ask if you can have something, okay? The question is, is this going to help me or not? If you don't know, research it and find out. Ask somebody, get some information. Is it going to help me? Then I probably can have it. Is it not going to help me? I can still have it. Do I want to have it? Right? That's, that's, that's where that comes in so oh my god i love this guy right oh my <laughs> god that's what I, it just makes me want to jump up and down yeah <laughs> yay yeah it, it's just so much sense and and like you i'm seeing so much in the community you know where all of a sudden somebody's and i'm sure you know who i'm talking about yep. too yep. and matter of fact they're going to be on my podcast oh, but cool. it, it's like they they're experimenting they're trying to get their bodies back in sync with where they need to be they're young their, you know, reproductive health is sucked and they're trying to get that back. So they started adding in some things, experimenting and Oh my goodness. Right. You would think that they're committing some kind of, you know, gosh, awful sin against, you know, keto carnivore, whatever. Yeah. I'm like, it's, Oh my it's, gosh, it's, it's really? unfortunate. Um, and I, if we're talking about the same person, I sent her some message and said, Hey, go for it. You know, this is, well, there's you, multiple. You got to do you. Yeah, are, there's the two that I can think of right off the top of my head, but yes, yes, you do your do you guys just remember that you changes, right? You changes, mm -hmm. and you got to be aware and be mindful and grow with yourself. Yeah, trust me, trust me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been a lot of change over you know 54 years I've been alive, oh, yeah. and yeah. that's you're so right because you cannot what worked for you yesterday is not going to work for you today necessarily or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You got to keep evolving, and that's the message I've been you know trying to move forward more is that you know yeah find what works for you. I do say that, but mm -hmm. also <laughs> it's what works for you now. Be willing to change. Be willing to adapt be willing to try new things experiment because you don't know unless you do the experiments on your own body i can't Absolutely. tell you i can give you a kind of a, a starting point kind right. of give you some pointers but right we can give you a baseline right as coaches we understand yes. what that baseline is because everybody's baseline is the same pretty right? much yeah carbs are not essential proteins are a priority everybody needs fat that's your baseline okay yes. how much protein based on your goals, how much fat based on your health, how much carbs based on your activity, all those, I mean, it's all based on what, but the baseline doesn't change. Love it. Oh, loving this guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is something too that, um, I, you know, I was going through all your stuff because I was just like, oh my God, I love him. So I'm going through all your stuff. It, awesome. And you talk about gluconeogenesis. Okay, yes. and when I first started keto, 
three years ago, whatever it was, that was like one of these big things. There was a couple of influencers who were like, yep. Ooh, be careful. Gluconeogenesis. Yep. Yep. You're going to get kicked out of ketosis, blah, blah, blah. So I was kind of scared to overeat my protein. Boy, I weigh my protein. Don't you eat too yep. much protein? Be sure you're getting your fat though. You know, and by the end I, I was over it. I was just kind of doing what my body needed and I, I didn't care. But anyway, you have that fear and it is still there, even though um, the, the new research and et cetera has come out and said, yeah, that's not really how it works. Right. Can, can you explain gluconeogenesis and the important of protein and how it's used or not used as a fuel source? Oh gosh. So that's, you know, the whole, that's a whole nother. Yeah. That's a whole nother. It thing, is. Yeah, oxidative yes. Priority and yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is so when I went, when I started carnivore and then I, I did it for a little bit, I was like, wow, this is crazy. Then I started researching it and reading and doing stuff. That was one of the things at the same time for me, right? It's been about two and a half years that I've been doing it. So around the same time of going like, Hey, wait, what is this gluconeogenesis thing? Um, there are a few things that made my brain explode as I did this research, right? The first thing was um, I'd never even heard of the concept of total carbs versus net carbs right before this, right? So the idea that I could eat something and those calories didn't count, like I almost went to the insane asylum for a while, like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about? Everything I put in my mouth is calories. What, how do you mean it doesn't count? So that was the first thing. The second thing was understanding oxidative priority and saying to myself, okay, if this is really how this works, then protein is almost the same as those fibers that I don't count for calories. And it was like, I, like I'm in the twilight zone here. Like, wait a second, this is, di because when we talk about calories, and I'll talk about oxidative priority first before I get into gluconeogenesis. Um, when we talk about calories, we're talking about burning fuel, okay? There is a difference between burning fuel, and by fuel, I'm gonna take the broadest, the broadest definition of that and say converting um, a macronutrient into ATP so that your muscles can move, right? I'll just say that, that just the broadest definition of fuel, creating energy so your body can do work, okay? That is fuel. Your body does not use protein for that, for that, for that at all, right? If it doesn't have to, the only time your body will break down proteins to use for ATP to use for fuel is if you don't have enough carbs and you don't have enough fat, okay? So when you look at oxidative priority, it's a little, I actually made my own version. So the, the version that most people have seen are in the keto book that Craig, Craig and Maria put Maria, together, yeah. The, the, yeah. Maria and Emmerich. So their book, that book, if you haven't gotten that book, get that book. I'm telling it you. It is. Right it's now, awesome. Yes. That book is mind blowing. The detail and the information that's in that book is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. Um, they have a matrix of oxidative priority in that book. Okay. And that's where I was kind of like, okay, this, I, I've seen this before. I understand this, but I made my own version because the assumption for oxidative priority that gets people mixed up is that it's based on how your body processes nutrients. That is not the same as how your body burns fuel. And people don't know there's a difference when they look at oxidative priority or they think about how my body burns fuel. They're thinking this is the order my body burns fuel. That's not what it is. It's the order your body processes nutrient, nutrients. Your body has different uses for the nutrients it burns, it processes, okay? All of them on the oxidative priority list are for fuel except for protein. Protein's purpose is muscle protein synthesis, cellular repair, and bodily function, right? That's what it processes. When it breaks down that steak you're eating, when it breaks down that protein shake, whatever it is, the leucine, the casein, the all the different proteins you're getting in your body are being used to keep your body functioning, right? Repair muscle, grow muscle, grow your fingernails, grow your hair, keep, I mean, all those things, right? That your body needs to do. So on my oxidative priority, I put two proteins because I did it by use. So your body will burn alcohol first, right? So anybody, that's why if you drink alcohol, that's why I lost 10 pounds, right? Because yep, I stopped yep. drinking alcohol. When you drink alcohol, everything else stops, right? And if you're drinking and eating at the same time, man, right to your hips every single time. So alcohol first, then exogenous ketones, right? Any fats that you eat, right? Then protein, 
And then everybody goes, well, wait, so protein, if my body, I'm going to burn, I'm going to burn protein. No, you're not. You're going to use protein to build muscle. Okay. Then it goes to fat and then carbs. And then I put protein again at the end of that, because then if all that other stuff is not around, then your body will use protein for fuel. Right. That is, that is starvation mode. Right. When we talk about I'm fasting is starvation mode. Fasting is not starvation mode. Right. Fasting because you still have what you need. Right. You're not, unless you fast too long, then you are in starvation mode. That's older. You're just doing it wrong then. Right. Um, so bottom line is, um, protein is used for building muscle. Everything else is used for burning fuel. Gluconeogenesis is that function in your body that will create the fuel that it needs from the two things at the front of that last priority. So that, that last protein I put at the end, which where proteins used for fuel is only used by gluconeogenesis. If it doesn't have enough carbs to convert to sugar or fat to convert to sugar. Okay. So if you have enough fat, i.e. what you put in your mouth or what you have <laughs> anywhere else, the chances that your body is using protein for, for sugar, for glucose is very low. Okay. So that is one thing. Your body does not by default break down protein for fuel. It is also done as an on-demand thing, right? Which we talk about, right? So yep. gluconeogenesis is not, hey, I ate protein. Hey, I ate fat automatically. I'm, I'm, I'm using gluconeogenesis. So, and particularly when we talk about fat versus protein, when it comes to protein, it's definitely not doing it on protein because we just said, right? I'm only going to break down protein for fuel if I need to, because there's nothing else available, right? It's a very, it's very expensive costly. Process. Yes, it's a very yes. expensive process. Yeah. And uh, the body is like, I'm trying to be efficient. I'm trying to save energy. I don't want to waste all this energy to make more. Like it just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Your body's um, smart. It's smart. It's not going to do dumb stuff like that. I mean, right. why? Unless we make it do dumb stuff. That's it, well, there, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> um, and then, so we got oxidative priority, protein, and I feel like there was one other thing um, about nucleogenesis. Do you remember if there was, I'm trying to remember what I said, what I talked about in that video. Um, you gonna pull it up? Uh, well, uh, I was gonna see if I put it down here. Um, no, I think, I think you pretty much covered what I wanted you to cover personally. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and if you, if you remember later, just jump yeah, yeah, in, yeah. it's all good. Um, but, you know, I just have so many people who just still freak out over gluconeogenesis and it kind of, you know, blows me away. It did. I remember. Okay. Um, it's not particularly a gluconeogenesis thing, but this is where I, when I was first learning about this stuff, um, I got, uh, I got confused a little bit because I talked to a couple of doctors um, and this is one of the things that I do in my research process. I don't just Google, I Google my butt off, right. Um, with stuff, but I've been fortunate enough and I think brave enough to reach out to doctors that are in the, in the space and say, Hey, look, I, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. Can you explain this to me? Right. So there's um, there's, and thank God, most of the doctors that are in this space are open to answering questions and talking to people, right? I've never so, had a problem. Yeah. So there are some very, very experienced um, professionals in the field who also follow this because they've done their research, right? So there is an issue with some people who are insulin resistant, where regardless of what they eat, it doesn't matter what it is, their insulin rises. Mm. Right. And that can be confused when someone who is insulin resistant eats a steak and their sugar goes up. Well, the steak, uh, the protein, may no, you're insulin resistant. Anything you eat is going to trigger an insulin response. Right. That's not the steak's fault. That's because you're unhealthy and we need to fix that. Right. Right. So, and it's okay. Like I, I would rather have somebody's insulin rise from steak because when they're insulin resistant, because here's what's the job of insulin. And why is it a problem if you're not eating, if you're eating a lot of carbs? The job of insulin is to push things into the cell. It's a storage hormone. Mm -hmm. If I'm eating steak, what do I have to push in? Protein. Good stuff, yeah. Good stuff, right? <laughs> Great, that's one of the reasons why 
it's good to have your insulin rise, to have your blood sugar rise, right? I'm sorry, I said insulin, I meant your blood sugar. Um, mm -hmm. because, because protein does have an insulin response. It doesn't have, it's not supposed to have a, gluc a glucose response. So someone who's insulin resistant, their sugars will rise. And that's because they're unhealthy. Um, so I would rather have someone's numbers be whacked when they're eating a steak because it's, they're, it's the only thing that it's got to put stuff in is protein. When your insulin and your sugar rises because you're eating carbs, the only thing it's got to put in is fat into your cells, right? And that's the problem in, to begin with. So yeah, that's all. So just for, for people who are insulin resistant, just, just keep in mind, anything you eat is going to raise your sugar. It's going to raise your, your, your insulin a little bit. And that's not necessarily a bad thing based on what you're eating. Because Agreed. what you're eating makes a difference. That's a whole. Oh my, yo, big time, yeah. <laughs> so, have you ever used a uh, CGM? I have not. Um, I would have to pay for one completely out of pocket because I have no medical reason to have yeah. one. Yeah, I, haven't, I yeah. haven't pulled that. I haven't pulled that trigger yet. I'm I really about to. to. I really want. I really want to. Oh gosh, me too. I'm just, yeah. this is cool. I'm going to do it. That's, that, that's next on my wish list. Okay. Right now, yep. I just um, had um, a bunch of tests done through um, the Let's Get Checked, okay. the home kits. Mm -hmm. So I, I did that. And three of mine came back um, invalid. <sighs> So I have to redo them. And I think I tried to do them all at the same time. And you have to fill these vials that are this big oh, from, yeah. you know, a finger prick. <laughs> so you're squeezing, you're squeezing. And then I think I just ruptured the, the blood cells and stuff because gotcha. that, that's what they okay. said. It was hamalized. I think that's how you say the word. And uh, so I have to redo them now. But they yeah, said, yeah, yeah. yeah, we don't recommend doing more than one test a day. And I'm like, Ooh. ambitious me. I yeah. Know. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Walk that's around. my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was, Edward I, was I still have these little, little marks on my fingers. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, another thing I wanted you to touch on because I thought you explained this very well uh -oh. is nutrient density versus calories. And it kind of goes oh, along with what see, you were I, just saying about it matters yeah. what you eat. Okay, so someone you need to get on here because he can explain it so much better than I can is Marty Kendall. I don't know if you know Marty. I don't think so. Okay, so look up, Nutri everybody watching, look up Nutrient Optimizer, <laughs> nutrientoptimizer.com. Marty has done years of research um, and he's actually got an app, you know, Chronometer. The, yes, the yes. I so he's actually that, yeah. got an app called Nutrient Optimizer that ties into Chronometer and oh. gives you, if you're logging your food, he will give you a nutrient report what nutrients you're getting, where are you deficient, what recommendations do you have? Like, it's like, huh. boom. Um, I'll send you a link, remind me to send you a link. To yeah, that too. how cool. He's somebody, below. he's based out of Australia. Um, he's somebody you definitely need to get on. His, his niche, his focus is, I mean, nutrient optimizer, that's what he is, right? He is about nutrient density. Um, nutrient density is basically the amount of food that you get to get where you get the optimal amount of nutrition, okay? So if I eat six ounces of steak versus three donuts, right? How much nutrients, how many nutrients or how, much, how nutritious is either of those meals, right? The calories don't matter. I got a ton of more, I got a ton more calories out of the donuts, way less nutrition, right? Way less calories in the, in the steak, way more nutrition. Okay. And that is literally, you can make a, a bar graph for most foods, right? In most cases, the higher the calorie count, the less the nutrition count, right? In many cases, the higher the nut nutrient density, the lower the calories, right? And if you are focusing on being healthy, then you need to focus on optimizing where you're getting your nutrition from, which if you look at nutrition charts, right? And, and the reason I said in that one video, like, don't compare it to calories because that is a, 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 a ploy that other camps in the nutrition space use to justify not eating meat. Okay. Right. You see, you go online and you see, you know, the, the amount of nutrients in broccoli in a hundred calories of broccoli versus a hundred calories of steak. Okay. No, who's going to eat just a hundred if you ate just 100 calories of broccoli, you'd be starving yourself, right? The same quantity of broccoli, six ounces of steak and six ounces of broccoli is like 
six bowls of broccoli, <laughs> right? Then you can compare, right? And that doesn't get into bioavailability and yeah. all the other issues, right, that we get into. So um, if you're comparing your nutrients to your calories, you're backwards. It should be nutrients to quantity. And then the calories will take care of themselves, right? That's why I don't do calories with any of my clients. All of my clients that I work with, I do grams. I, this is how much we figure out how many grams of protein, how many grams of fat, how many grams of carbs. And that's it. I don't, I do not. I tell them, I do not want you to know how many calories you're eating. I don't care. We're looking at the amount of food. And that's what so, that's what I do. so I can quote you as saying a calorie is not a calorie. A calorie is not a calorie. <laughs> it's not. And it's right. It, God, it's so frustrating. I know. It's so I know. frustrating. I know. Because again, like I said before, what you eat is more important than the calories you eat. Right? Because it's not used for the same thing. Again, oxidative priority. Protein, if I ate, all right, I'll just use an example. If I ate 2,000 calories a day and 40% of that is protein, okay, and I'm at this weight, if I ate 2,000 calories a day and I made only 20% of that protein, I'm going to get fatter. It's still 2,000 calories a day. Yes. Right? If I'm cur- eating 2000 calories a day and I'm only eating 20% protein and I change that and I go to 40% protein, I'm going to get skinnier, but it's still 2000 calories a day. Right. So it's, it's, uh, Oh, I know. I like, I I like to, I like to talk about fuel calories. So I, I try not to use the word calories in general. I always try to put fuel in front of it, right. To get people to understand that we're talking about, Fuel. When you're talking about calories, you're talking about fuel that does not include protein. It does not include protein. Yeah. So that's, calories that's, are such a frustrating thing anyway, because you're not saying that calories don't matter at all. It, you're just saying that you can't like just use calorie as a measurement because right. all foods are not created equal and they do not work on the body the same way. Correct. They don't. And that's something I learned by doing the opposite of what we're all told. Right. You know, right. All of a sudden I just started dropping weight and my health was back right. on medication. And it's like, what? But, but, but I'm eating actually a little bit I'm more eating calorie. a lot more, a lot more. I went from yeah. like 1800 to almost 3000 and lost 5%, 5% body fat. Okay. I didn't get to do that. But right, right? it was like, it was like, boom, like, wait, what? What's going on here? I'm stuffing my face. This is crazy. I love it. It was more food. than my 800 to 1200 calories that I used to eat. Oh my gosh. Really? I know. Oh, yeah. And most of that, wow. of course, was vegetables and very lean meat because red meat is bad for you. Mm-hmm. Bad for you, saturated mm-hmm. fat. No, no. <laughs> and so that was, you know, margarine and healthy uh, grains like oatmeal and oh, yeah. You were, and, and how, so how messed up were you? Like what kind of things were you doing? Oh, I was messed up, messed up. Well, okay, I'll just go ahead and show you. Well, number one, I look like okay. that. Okay, so that was that. I need to get some of my pictures printed out. That's awesome. I just had, just had that <laughs> I ready to go. There. See? Uh, there you go. <laughs> but I had high blood pressure, like severely high blood pressure. Yeah. Um, I was pre-diabetic. Okay. I had serious digestive issues, like my whole life, but I didn't really even understand I had issues, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. I mean, I would have pain. That's, that's like the thing. That, a lot of people don't know. I thought it was yeah. normal kind of thing that you just kind of cycle through, whatever. Yep. Um, you know, and it just, just, just bad health just bad yep. and you know i had reynolds um really? i okay. yeah rosacea um you know just just some nasty stuff like that so mm-hmm. yeah and when i you know started keto and things started improving that's where i lost all my weight and um i got off of almost all my medication at slept for oh acid reflux i had that horribly that's oh, a big one. Yep. yeah yep. and i was on nexium eight years every day Wow. Did you read how bad that is and the lawsuits and all that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was me. Okay. I tell you what, I get, I sometimes I have to turn the TV off when I see these acid reflux or the new, the, the insulin and diabetes commercials for medication, the new stuff that's coming out. I'm just like, yeah. oh, I know. I know. I, uh, 
It's like, why it's can't you waste. just get to the root? Why do you right. have to medicate if such it's not waste. necessary? Sometimes you can't help it. I'm not dissing all medications. I'm sure. not. But sure. oh my gosh, it's like, you know, what causes type 2 diabetes? Mm, okay, how about we kind of deal with that and try to fix that? How do you fix right. that? Mm. Okay, it's not really by taking drugs. That just right. kind of mask it in. Yeah. Very, 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 very frustrating. Yes. Okay. Well, I got to get to some more stuff here. Okay. okay. This is something I really like that you said. And let me make sure I'm saying this right. If someone is looking to change their dietary lifestyle, mm -hmm. what are some factors you feel are important? You, you had it like three wow. that you listed that you felt were really important. And New, I'll just nutrient density, bioavailability, and uh, what was the third satiety. one? Satiety. Satiety. Yes. yes. Oh, that's huge. Yes. That's huge. Yes. Um, we talked about nutrient density, right? Uh, the idea yes. is to be efficient, to get as many nutrients as possible, right? Um, when you talk to Marty, because I, I will, I'll connect you guys. Um, okay. One of the things that he found that I found fascinating with him is some of the data he has um, alludes to, and I don't know if he's followed up on this, but about a, last year sometime, he was looking at some data that was indicating that your body will automatically engage satiety hormones when it's gotten the nutrients it needs, right? Regardless of what you're eating, yes. how much you're eating, any, like when your body is like, Hey, I got, I got what I need. I'm good. And it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Great. You know? So there's some things that trigger those hormones, right? Hormone, hormone health in general. That's a whole nother video. Oh, yeah. I may not be the guy I can tell you, there's so much to have to do with hormones. It's, it's, uh, gosh, it's mind boggling. Um, I do not envy endocrinologists. I'll tell you that, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's, that's it with nutrient density. Um, bioavailability. This is the one that gets me in trouble because this is the one where I say plants are trying to kill you. Stop eating plants. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And everybody looks at me like, what are you talking about? You know? And it's like, look guys, and I think Saladino says this best. I think his message when it comes to plants and the way he presents it is the best. When he basically, because he basically just says, look, evolutionarily, plants have not been a foundation of our diet. You talk to anybody and they'll tell you that. Like, and duh, right? So you can't say that we need to eat plants because of, because of nothing. There's no reason to say that. We have nothing in our history that indicates we need to eat plants. Plants are a survival and a food of scarcity, right? When we can't find the meat, which is our primary source, then we gather, right? We are hunters first and then gatherers. We are not gatherers first and then, it's not, it's not gather hunt, <laughs> right? It's hunter gatherer, right? So uh, yeah, I mean, we talk about anti-nutrients. We talk about the extra work that our body has to do to break things down, right? I saw your post, and this is a great segue to your post. I think it was this morning, or maybe you post so much. I can't I keep track of when stuff is coming out. So you posted the why we can't eat like cows Probably, graphic. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it was, or, you know, cows have four that, stomachs. They eat. Wait, I think, I think it was hers, health coach. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was I hers. Think. Yeah. Yeah. It was hers that you, you forward, you added yeah. it to your thing. Yeah. Um, right. Cows have four stomachs right? They rely on fermentation. They eat for 16 hours a day, like all of these things, because they need that to turn the plants into something their body can use. We don't have four stomachs. We no. can't eat for 16 hours a day. We rely on, on enzymes breaking our food down, not fermentation, right? And those enzymes are not strong enough and are not the energy required and the extra inflammation an oxidative stress that occurs when our body tries to break these things down is not good for us, right? So that's where bioavailability, right? If I eat a bunch of kale, that's great. It's got all these vitamins and things that I, that I can use. How much of that am I actually getting into my body because of the, all the damage and extra work my body is doing to break that kale down, right? That's, where, that's what bioavailability is. So if you're, not, if you're not concerned about the quality and the quantity of nutrients in the food you're eating, and you're not being aware of if you're actually getting those nutrients into your body. And then you have to balance that with making sure that you're not overeating, right? 
to get all of those nutrients. That's where satiety comes in. And it's really crazy how those three things, when you look at meat, they magically kind of just, just kind of come together. Yes, they really do. They really right? do. So it's nutrient dense. It's the most bioavailable food that we have. And it encourages, I'll, see, I'll use encourage, encourages satiety. So you can't overeat it. It is, it, try overeating meat. It I is can't. not easy. I can't. It is not easy. No. Okay? You have to have like something really kind of um, uh, not quite right uh, to be able to override that. And what I mean by that is there are some people who have a binge eating disorder. And yes. I just had yes. um, actually one of my friends on who has this issue and she can overeat me. Really? And it blows, wow. yeah, it blows my not mind because I can't. I just right. can't. Right. I mean, I can eat maybe nine ounces and I, I, I'm done. I, I, I mm -hmm. can't, I just can't mm -hmm. anymore. There was one time I almost ate a pound of brisket at this really awesome uh, barbecue place in Austin, but you know, we won't go there, but I almost <laughs> ate a pound and my Which husband one? was There's going, so many. <gasps> it is the original blacks. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Right. So good. I'm not even gonna lie. I just kept <laughs> eating it and eating it and he was just, he just watched me. He didn't, he wouldn't right. even eat. He just watched me. He was like, Oh my God. You should have got some video. <laughs> I know. Right. I just, this is so amazing. Sure. Yeah. Cause I just don't, I don't do that. I can't do that. I don't, I, but it was fatty and I don't like fatty meat generally. Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm a carnivore. I don't, like I don't, fatty meat. I don't like fatty meat. Filet is my filet. Meal. That's my <gasps> Yes. That's I'm mine. Filet. Like, Did you see my post all day. earlier about no, what, what, what cut of meat do you like? I didn't see whatever? the play on there. I didn't see I, that there. was number one uh, or number two. That was number two. Oh, I miss it. Yeah. Ribeye was number one. Yeah. Yeah. You need to go back and uh, do the survey there. Yeah. Okay. Cause we, we need more full a people all day long. Cause there's a lot of ribeye people. I'm just going to tell uh, you. Well, that's uh, down from the top. I know I'm a weird carnivore, whatever. I, don't <laughs> I like what I would I'm rather like. have filet and make up the fat with the butter that I cook the filet in than have a ribeye with a bunch of fat on it. Me too. I know, I know they kind of say that it's better to do it the other way, but yes, I like eating my filet with butter, yes. grass fed butter. Yes, I do. That's for sure. Okay. Let, let, let me check the chat before I ask you one more question. I may have to just have, uh, I'm going to just have to have you on again. Gosh, dog it. Okay. There's a couple of things, Shucks. but it's like, like too much to get into, but I wanted you to have the opportunity to talk about what you do as far as your job goes. You are the creator mm -hmm of the apex system, apex I, want, system yeah. I, I want you to talk what, what that is and what you do okay. and also you have a program for um those who have served and you also have a passion you talked about mm -hmm. the little niche group you like to work with i want you to talk about that too okay well and then that's actually what the apex training system is for oh right? that's okay. what the apex training system is so the apex training system is basically something that i put together it's a it's a multi it, it's a eight week coaching program that incorporates carnivore and fitness, right? And I target, my focus is because this is who, this is who I am, right? I didn't find fitness until in my, I was in my forties. I didn't find nutrition and get that um, transformation, right? I'm 48 years old. I'm a grandfather. Um, I can't believe I'm less than two years away from being 50. Um, but I don't feel like, I don't, I don't, Everything that I ever grew up thinking I would feel or, or experience at 50, I have no concept because that's not how I feel, right? That is not my life at all, right? I'm a CrossFit coach. Um, I go hiking several times a week, I'm active. I do stuff. Um, I am not the same body fat percentage, but I'm at the same weight I was when I got out of basic training 30 years ago, right? I'm 185 pounds, I'm under 10% body fat. I can do everything that I ever could do better than when I was 18 years old. Um, and I want to give that to other guys, right? My focus is, look, I've been there. I was 40 pounds overweight. I was not happy with myself. You know, I, I've been that tired, fatigued, lethargic, not feeling well, depressed, poor self image. Like I've been there with all of that stuff. And uh, so for guys who are in that 35 to 40 range or higher, um, I want to help them get out of that, right? I want to be able to, to, to help guys be a, a dad that sets an example for their kids, to be a husband. I've been, I've been the husband who is afraid that his wife doesn't think he's, he's attractive anymore, 
right? I've been there, right? And it's not a good feeling. It really is not a good feeling to feel like you have to overcompensate or do other things because you're not attractive enough to keep her interested, right? That is not a good feeling. Most guys won't admit that, right? And, but most guys have that in the back of their head because they know, guys, they, they know women don't really find dad bods attractive, <laughs> Right. Oh, it's, I'm but, but the media tells us. Yeah, they do. yeah. The media also tells us that carbs are good, right? <laughs> um, so th- that's where that focus is. The Apex Training System is me saying, "Look, guys, I've been there. You can do it. Let me help you do it." Right? We'll get your nutrition straight. We'll get you doing a fitness program, um, and then get you set up so that you can build habits, right? Because you know it's about habits. It's about getting that exposure and saying, "Hey." what are the small things that I can do now that's going to carry me forward? And then I can build on that to keep going. And that's what the, that's what that is all about. So, and that's what I'm about, right? I think in the space that we're in, right, we're in the keto carnivore space. um, There's a lot of health people that are saying awesome stuff. My thing and my background is fitness. Um, There are not, there are not a lot of fitness people in this space talking about fitness for everybody, for everyday people, right? There's a lot of people who are bodybuilders, powerlifters, who have all of this background experience at a high level of performance, right? I'm the guy, I've spent the last eight years helping 40-year-old moms and 50-year-old dads and 60 and 70-year-old grandfathers get healthy so they can have a good quality of life. That's what I do, right? So I'm trying to take the fitness aspect and de-science it a little bit right? And say, look, here's some things you can do practically. Here's, here's how this stuff works without getting it so confusing that you get lost, right? From a nutrition and fitness standpoint. And that's what we want to do. I love that. That That's awesome. Um, and, and this is all online. Yep. Yep. Cool. And you'll have, a, it's apxts.com. It's basically apex training system with no vowels. Um, just the main letters. Um, but it's an online program. I do one-on-one coaching. Um, and if you're in the Baltimore area, I do one-on-one personal training and CrossFit classes as well at a, at a gym in the area. So. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. me. This has been a blast and I'm going to have you back because seriously, there's a whole page of questions. I didn't even get to. <laughs> so I have like, you know, more material. So there you okay, go. Okay, cool. Um, and, if, and if this goes well, as far as response and if people have questions about anything else, I mean... We could do a regular thing. I'm down for it. Heck yeah. Oh, I love that. That'd be awesome. Okay. So, hey, y'all, subscribe while you're here. Go follow Bronson. I will have his stuff below. Don't you worry about it. So, it'll all be good. And thank you again. Really. I've, you I've had a wonderful time. It has been and, a yeah. And, and it feels me rant. great. Yes. It's great because <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, he gets it. Yes. Yes. He's on the same page with me. Yes. It's, it's <laughs> awesome meeting other people who are like, like yes 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 you see so much and i mean there's a lot of great people i'm not dissing that at all Mm -hmm. but you know when you find your like niche in your tribe within your tribe that's way cool (laughs) anyway well thanks a lot bronson and you have a wonderful evening and we will have to do this again very soon sure bye bronson